Okay, you're good to go. All right. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us uh, this afternoon. Um, as I said, uh, the RPA was released in December of the uh, of last year, but there were other things that were released, and there were things that were changed because of it, uh, because of the RPA, and a whole bunch of things changed. And I'm going to show you um, what changed. Hold on, let me see. Uh, I don't know if I can find it. Hold on, hold on. <clears throat> Excuse me, there we go. Okay, what you should see on your screen right now is the December 2021 forms release. Uh, and this is uh, everything that either is new or re was revised um, and it is uh, it is four pages, people. But a lot of this stuff you are never, ever, ever going to um, use. Um, so, uh, and it explains, and I'm going to show you how you can get your own copy of this. I I'll put it in the chat, but um, you can find it on your own. Um, and it and it's nice because it explains what was revised. Uh, for example, on the on the residential lease, um, what was revised is that their effective January first, twenty twenty two. Um, there's a new booklet that we have to give to um, tenants, um, and uh, it has to do with dampness and mold. And they also added a disclosure um, portion on the actual lease to add if somebody died on the property or other material facts to disclose, um, like uh, the neighbors a pain in the butt. So um, I would disclose that if I were you. Um, so anyways, uh, it, it's a handy dandy little thing um, that, uh, that gives you a sense of exactly what was, um, was changed. So I'm going to stop sharing that, and I'm going to show you how to get to that. And let's see. That's not it. What is that? Um, wait, let me double check. Let's see where I'm at here. Okay, so now, one minute, hold on, okay, there it is. So now what you should be seeing is my internet and it should be CAR, the homepage of, uh, of car.org. Uh, I'm going to move all these pictures. Um, and right up here in the corner, let me just preface this, that car.org is, it's next to impossible to find things on car.org. I mean, they make it so um, you have to be searching for specific things and blah, blah, blah. Anyways. So, uh, but there is a search uh, a search button here. So if you go to the search button, oops, and it opens up type keywords. And if you type in December 2021 and the little magnifying glass and search, it's gonna do its search and you'll see December 2021 forms release. So it keeps doing that. Uh, you, and because this is a member benefit, you always have to sign in. So here is the December 21 forms release. And right there, it says quick summary guide. And that's exactly what I showed you. It's a, you know, it's a PDF that's downloadable, um, which reminds me, um, where is this? Uh, where's the chat box on this? 
I can't find my chat box. Um, okay, here we go. All right. Uh, All right. So I think I just sent those in the chat box. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I think that quick guide is in the chat box. It's showing. Great. Thanks. Um, so here's the forms release. And we're going to look at this. And, and here are all the forms that, um, that were released in December of 2021. I'm going to concentrate on a few things that um, here are some new releases, um, but I will tell you right here, the co it, it, this is co-op. Um, it's very, very rare that you're gonna sell something as a co-op. Uh, there is a building, uh, people in San Fernando Valley and in in, uh, Sherman Oaks, there is a building in Sherman Oaks that is a co-op. Uh, I don't know of anything in Long Beach, and I don't know of anything. Uh, one. Is there one? There must mm -hmm. be one in every area. I but, know, you exactly. Know, it's, it's hard to sell a co-op uh, because a lot of lenders won't, won't lend on it. Um, and just so everybody knows, a co-op is different than a condominium. Um, uh, because you have to be approved by a board in order to, you know, to join the co-op and all that stuff. So, um, it's really, really hard. Um, so, um, and I see, uh, Alon says that there's a few in Woodland Hills, um, I guess in the Warner Center. So, um, so yeah, they're, but anyways, those, those are new. There's a new um, advisory and there's a new purchase agreement for co-ops. TIC is tenants in common. Um, if you have a tenants in common, uh, which is also a rarity, um, uh, but um, that's that's also the the OA means um, advise the advisory um, and um, the PA to the co-op is purchase agreement. But this is the one that we're going to look at look at uh, first, and it's the TOPA. And the TOPA um, replaced the um, tenants uh, in possession. It's no longer tenants in possession, it's no longer TIP, it's TOPA. It's tenant occupied property addendum. So anytime there is a tenant that is occupying a property and you're selling it, uh, one new units, one to four, um, you need to use this, whether they're leaving or they're uh, going to remain in possession. Um, this needs to be used um, because um, uh, 1A says they are remaining in possession, but 1B says it will be delivered vacant. So this is why you still need to use this form um, when it is um, a tenant occupied property. Um, so, and it, there's a place for, um, for what unit is being you know, vacated or whatnot. Uh, and this is very important. One B two, if seller after exercise of good faith attempts and subject to applicable law is unable to remove existing tenants by close of escrow, or, or there's a, an option to five days before close of escrow, buyer may cancel this agreement and buyer's sole remedy shall be the return of the, of the deposit and buyer's reasonable out-of-pocket expenses for inspection reports and appraisal fees under the agreement. Buyer may elect to proceed with the transaction with the tenant in possession and waives any claim for other damages or compensation arising out of the tenant remaining in possession. That's a really important clause that, hey, the landlord's going to try to get them out. But if you can't get them out, um, the buyer has two choices. Either you cancel and get your deposit back um, and they're, they're allowing for um, the refund of inspection fees and, um, and appraisals, um, or you go forward 
and you're not allowed you're not entitled to any other compensation you're not entitled to uh, monies to evict them you are knowingly moving forward with that tenant in possession um and if you want to um to um evict them that's on your own dime so um so that's really important so then it goes into deposits that um, the deposits are transferred to the buyer, um, uh, government uh, compliance. <clears throat> and this is the usual um, thing that if the seller changes anything with existing listings during the escrow, they need to um, notify the buyer. Um, and um, there's different timeframes to do that. And buyer has, five days after receipt of these notice of changes to, um, to give notice to the seller, whether they object or not. So um, personal property is not included in the sale. Um, seller documentation, you know, uh, service agreements, uh, then you have, you can check this uh, if you want an income and inspect, uh, excuse me, uh, expense statement or estoppels. Um, remember, estoppels are um, are signed by the um, the tenants as to what they um, agree is the uh, the agreement between them and the landlord. Um, so, and then surveys and engineering and and all that. So that is the new tip, which is now the topper. So. Um, um, so that is a really important new thing. Whenever there's a tenant in possession, then you, you need to use this. So are there any questions on that before I move on to the next, next thing? I am not seeing any. Um, so we're gonna go back. So really that's the only new um, form that I'm gonna cover here because all the other ones are you know, the new purchase agreements. Every purchase agreement has changed. Uh, once again, I'll remind you that um, uh, probate and manufactured homes um, purchase agreements have been sunsetted. Uh, what does sunset mean? They've been taken away. So you use the regular RPA with the, um, with the uh, probate addendum attached to it, or um, the regular RPA with the manufactured home addendum attached to it. So um, that's, um, that's important to know. So I, one thing that I thought was interesting that they revised, these are all the revised forms. Um, and uh, they have revised the addendum form. I thought, what did they revise on the addendum form? Um, but it's a good revision because we never knew what to do with this. They have added tenant and landlord to the addendum. Um, so landlords and tenants wouldn't sign this because it said buyer and seller. So now they've added tenant and landlord. So it works for a lease, uh, an addendum for a lease just as well as it works for um, for a sale, so I think that's a a great uh, change. Um, let, um, let me just so I have it here. Rich, can I ask a quick question? Sure. Uh, you said there is a probate addendum. There is. is. There, right. Is there also an, an addendum for uh, a trust sale, be it court approved or not? Or well, a trust sale is that's a probate. It's not a trust sale. A trust sale is a regular sale, is treated as a regular sale, except that the property is in a trust. Um, it's a probate that is, uh, requires the, either the court confirmation or not. If, if somebody dies with a property in trust, um, then um, it's treated as a regular sale with the surviving trustee now selling the property um selling that property so um so that's there's no there's no um uh there's no need to uh 
for an additional addendum, there's an advisory for a trust because remember, if if a husband and wife have their property um, or or people have a property in a trust um, and they are living in the property or they have had that property for years as an income property, you know, um, uh, they are the originating trustees of that trust. You know, they're not exempt from the TDS or the SBQ. Uh, they have knowledge about that property and they need to uh, devote, you know, they need to fill out these forms. You know, remember the TDS is a statutory requirement. It's required by law. And the S, um, SBQ is a, um, is a, a contractual it's in the contract. Now, if somebody if somebody in the the trust dies, and the surviving trustee is neither of the originating trustees, then that trust sale is exempt from the TDS and SBQ because they didn't theoretically they didn't live in it and they didn't have knowledge of it and and, and whatnot. So um, just remember that. So the next thing I'm gonna um, I'm Rich, gonna jump. Yes, if I could, um, we do have a question. Um, sure. Can you use Topa for commercial tenants? Oh, I did see that. I meant to answer that, Joe. I saw that. Sure, you could. I don't see why you couldn't. I mean, it does specify. You're probably going to get pushback because you. It does specify on the top of the form that it's residential one to four. So. You know, you probably are going to, to get some pushback on that. Um, maybe a better way to do it is to steal the language from the the TOPA um, and you add it as an addendum to the to any commercial. Um, I I probably would go that route. That um, just see, stealing the language about you know I'm, we're not going to you know. And as long as all parties agree to it, then then it's a you know it's deemed agreed to. So um, so yeah, I'm, no. um, let's see. Uh, there, uh, the cancellation of contract. Is, I'm going to jump around because I'm I'm um, a lot of these you won't you won't ever ever use. No, we, we cancellation of contract. Where are you? This should be in alphabetical order, but I don't see it. Darn, darn, darn. Right. Um, CC. Hmm. That's not it. Uh, and and these, just so you know, you saw that I clicked on those changes in the in the contract, and um, and it brought me to these drafts these drafts are red lines so anything that's um anything that has been revised um is going to show up um in, in uh on these forms so let me see i can't uh, why are you not coming up uh let's see sorry while i'm here i'll show you the the residential the lease agreement that we talked about and the uh revisions to this like i said these are red line so you can go to um uh, you can go to the form and look to where what has changed here is that mold and dampness um, uh, booklet that now needs to be um, uh, given to the tenant. And you get these booklets um, through zip forms. They're available with EPUB, EPUBs. Uh, and then there are a couple of boxes here, death on the premises and then other material facts. Um, Oh, and this is a great, a great addition to the lease. Termination of agency relationship. Because how many times do I get a call? You know, I represented the buyer, or the, excuse me, I represented the tenant, or I represented the landlord on this lease. 
and we're six months into the lease and they have a disagreement and they want me to do this and they want me to do that. Okay, this is a great addition to the, this form. Termination of agency relationship. The landlord and tenant acknowledges and agrees that unless the broker is a property manager, which FYI, you're forbidden to do property management per your ICA agreement with the office. Um, once the tenant and uh, the landlord and tenant enter into this agreement, broker is not, uh, does, will not represent owner in any manner regarding the management of the premises any representation duties that the broker may owe to or any or agency relationship that the broker may have with either landlord or tenant is terminated. So this is great, great that, um, so, <clears throat> and then I guess you can choose exactly when you, that re relationship ends. Does it end when you deliver, end when it, you deliver the keys or when the tenant occupies the property, completion of the move-in, uh, the, the memo, you know, um, so that is fantastic that they added that there. We needed that to be added. So just, um, so uh, there's also some, if I don't see things here, I'm gonna go, I'll go right, I'll go into zip forms. No, this is court confirmation. Um, because uh, I'm not seeing, because I know that uh, like the, I don't know what these are. Is this opening anything? It's not. Um, what changed in the TDS? Uh, the TDS. I, I, the only thing that I see red marked is the date. Uh, that makes no sense. Um, is the SBQ here? Because I know that the SBQ changed. See, SPT. Uh, maybe if I go back and, sorry. Oh, too far. It certainly didn't make it easy here. No. <laughs> to find the forms, geez. Um, I don't know what happened up there. Um, renamed forms. This was interesting because um, for those of you who are dealing with an exchange, they renamed this form. Um, but uh, if your buyer is exchanging a, a property in a 1031 exchange, there's a form, uh, the buyer's intent to exchange an addendum, um, and it, um, you really should be using this. Uh, it's BXA. There's also a seller's version, seller's intent to exchange addendum. It's an SXA. Um, uh, so that's that's really helpful. Um, what are the other ones here that they've? I'm going to get out of this, and I'm going to go because I know that um, uh, I know that cancellation of contracts changed, and it changed significantly. That it's worth talking about. And I don't know why they don't have it in the red red line versions. <clears throat> All right. Just we talked about um, that um, that booklet for the mold and whatnot. You should all know that there's a forms library and your you it's a it's a drop down menu. Um, CAR forms is usually the default. And then if you press that arrow, then there's all these other 
forms that are available to you because I, I'm a member of many different associations. Every association has their own um, set of forms, which loads into my zip forms. But right here, e, uh, California electronic um, EPUBs, um, all, all of your, um, your booklets are there. Um, so you can, uh, you can email them easily to your, uh, clients. Um, so, all right. So now let's go. Rich, Rich, I'm not sure where you're saying they are. You're just, we only see a screen with your car thing. I don't see anything about the pubs. Oh, you don't wait. Okay. Wait. Um, sorry. It opens a new window and I think that it got lost in the new window. Now there should be like a big blank and in the corner it says all forms. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Okay. So here is where I'm talking about that drop down menu. All these are available. Well, they're not all available to you because I, like I said, I belong to many different associations. So each association has their own forms. But if you go here, EPUB, EPUB, uh, and I have there, yeah. EPUBs is where you get your um, guides and uh, the homeowners, the signature page for your earthquake stuff. Um, that's all on uh, EPUBs. So, all right, so now, Cancellation of contract. So this is what changed in the cancellation of contract. The first section, remember, it has to be signed. There's two areas to be signed on the cancellation of contract. First, once a notice to, to perform has been given and, and you've waited the appropriate amount of time, then, um, which is two days, it, it, it's, it's two days and that's it now because they've changed it in the, the contract. You used to be able to change that, now you can't. So it's after the two, two days, you know, 24, a 24 hour day. So uh, after you waited it that amount of time, that contract can be canceled. Um, you don't need everybody to sign off to cancel the contract. Um, whoever is canceling for whatever reason, you know, if it was because of notice to perform, you have those choice. Buyer failed to remove the appropriate contingency, you know, after a notice to perform, seller failed to remove the appropriate contingency after a notice to perform, you know, um, the other party has failed to close escrow as permitted by good faith exercise of paragraph. What goes there if you're canceling because of appraisal, because it didn't appraise, then you find the paragraph for appraisal and you put that paragraph in there. So we are canceling because of appraisal uh, and it's paragraph number, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Or if both buyer and seller agree, mutually agree, um, you know, it's either buyer or seller or both. Okay. Or, or poor mutual agreement. Okay. But only one person See down here, the party canceling the contract has to sign. So zip forms doesn't know who's canceling, the buyer or the seller. So you have to put the signature in there. Remember that, a lot of people miss this. Okay, so now we get to the part that both parties have to sign and that's the release of the deposit. So um, down here, <clears throat> a full release of the deposit, it, 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 you know, seller authorized the buyer's deposit to be, um, you know, less buyer's cost or buyer authorizes the release of the sellers, uh, the release of the deposit to the seller. I have never seen anything that ever happen in my life. So, um, but you know, who knows? Okay, so, um, but then they're, they've added this uh, other thing. Buyer authorized release of a dollar amount and the balance to be returned to the buyer. 
So that now they're, they're allowing you to negotiate and say, okay, we're gonna cancel. We'll release a $10,000 of the deposit if you, you know, we'll cancel. And maybe a seller will, to avoid the hassle of having to first go through mediation, because that's the first step, according to the contract. You don't mediate, you don't have a chance to get your attorney's fees. So everybody should be mediating. You know, there should be no reason why somebody shouldn't be mediating. So, um, so, so here is, you know, a, an agreement that you can come to where you're giving up part of the, the deposit just to get out of it, just to, to move on. And so um, that's, really a great addition to this form. We'll see if it works. You know, usually people are stubborn. They want all or nothing, but, you know, it may be worth their time. I mean, I've seen, you know, I've seen um, disputes about deposit go months and months, and then they end up, you know, splitting it or, do you know, it's just like, you know, but maybe they needed that time to get to that 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 part. So, I, you know, I'm not sure about that. So uh, what's the abbreviated form name? Abbreviated form name for which? Along. I'm not sure which. Uh, if you're talking about the, um, if you're talking about the, the 1031 thing, it was, uh, got it, oh, the uh, CC, yeah. Um, cancellation of contract. So um, they have changed. Um, they've also changed. You still should be seeing my zip forms, correct? Yep. Okay. They've changed um, a request for repair. And there's a significant change here on the request for repair. Um, and it basically has to do, if you're doing an FHA or a VA loan, um, if, there are, if there are lender um, repairs that need to be done in order for this person to get this loan, there is a section now to address those, that the lender, the FHA or the VA lender requires the following things to be um, to be uh, repaired and you can list them. Um, so, or the buyer requests that the seller pay for the following costs or, expense, uh, or expenses required by the, you know. So that's a great, uh, great addition to this. Um, and then the rest of the, the rest of the form is basically uh, the same, except that the response also has um, a, a place to deal with the FHA and VA um thing so i wanted to show you that and also the rrr addresses that also so that's another great um change to um that form uh i want to point out uh, mona do you still have a question i see your hands up Yes, I do have a question. So back to the deposit when you're in escrow, when you were speaking about how the seller can release a portion of it to the buyer, when would that be applicable when you no. have contingencies or no contingencies and you want to retrieve some of your deposit? Well, no, it, it's not the seller releasing the deposit to the, it's really the buyers releasing part of the deposit to the seller. And it's, it's usually when they're canceling and they have no contingencies left. Because if you have a contingency left and you cancel, you're entitled to all of your deposit back. So it's when they're, they don't have a contingency and they want out of the contract and they're releasing part of, um, part of their deposit back to um, the seller or yeah, part of the deposit to the seller. So, uh, in order to get out. So the buyer would be consenting to release a portion of the deposit in order to be able to retrieve the rest of their commission. I um, mean, the rest of their deposit from the seller. Uh, right. Yeah, because if you've removed all your con contingencies and you uh, cancel the uh, contract, you know, um, really, 
you've defaulted on the contract and the seller um, is entitled to all of the deposit. Um, but you know, the seller may acquiesce and say, in order not to uh, have to deal with mediation and you know and tie things up, um, then you know I'll I'll release some of this money. You know, I'll I'll give you back some money. So. All right, so um, the contingency removal has been changed to reflect, you know, um, now there are different, um, you know, buyer's investigations, different levels, all of the buyer's investigations or um, part of the, the part related to inspections and physical attributes of the property, um, you know, uh, the, you know, you can only remove just that portion of, but I also wanted the, the main, main change to the contingency removal is, um, um, is that there is no acceptance or acknowledgement. You no longer have to acknowledge that you received this. It's also the same with the notice to perform. You no longer have to acknowledge receipt. Why? Because the last page of the RPA, you are attesting that if something is sent to this email address or texted to this phone number, receipt happens. It's just the, you know, you are acknowledging that just by sending it to these, what these uh, emails or uh, text numbers, I, I've acknowledged that I've received it. You don't actually have to look at it in your uh, inbox or on your phone. You've received it. So, um, Alon, you asked, will all these updated forms be automatically populated when we start a new transaction? Yes, they will. Um, you, you know, because you won't be able to get the old forms anymore. Um, so that's that. Mitch, Let me, yes. If I can um, uh, kind of add to that I, and questioning, um, they will automatically populate in zip forms when you search. However, a lot of agents think that if they have a template set up, everything populates new there. That's not correct, right? You would have to add them to your templates that you've created. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I was under the impression that it does add okay. to your templates, but let me see. Um, okay, I'm, I haven't changed this template. I, I can tell you that I haven't changed this template in years and okay. I'm looking at the, it's a purchase template. Okay, and I'm this looking is 1221. It says 1221. So okay, perfect. I think it does, it does actually uh, populate into the, okay, new, good. the new forms. Are, are, are there any new forms that are required for compliance in our opportunities and is opportunities updated to reflect? Is opportunities <laughs> updated to reflect? You know, <laughs> <laughs> I have been it's make you want to looking, laugh so much. <laughs> I have been looking at these checklists and I it's I there I have just had a block I, and it's getting late here and my, I, I'm seeing that the sun's going down I'm probably in darkness or whatever but um, uh, I, I am working on updating these checklists and as soon as I update these checklists the compliance will look at them and she will go over them and say, hey, you missed this, you missed that. So it's it's in the process. So, Thanks, you know, it's, you know <laughs> you. it's just, you know, it will be, I, Deborah will attest, I've been promising a new checklist for Coastal for months now. And then I said, no, I'm not gonna do it. 
because new forms are coming out in December. So I'm going to do it after the first of the year after those come out. So I've and sat he didn't down say on my after the first of what year? He just said <laughs> after the first of the year. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> but I I sit down at my desk and I look, you know, I look at them and I did do one. I, I did the commercial, but it has nothing to do with most of you. So, <laughs> uh, so oh, so he's um, catering to some at this. Point. I but uh, but I haven't distributed it. I mean, I've, oh. I've looked at it and I I I've redone it, but I haven't given it to anybody yet. Yeah. So um, I I am working on doing that. I think I have to be. I try to do it during the day, and then so so many other things um, come up. So I think I'm just going to have to take a weekend where I, I don't have calls and emails to to attend to to just sit down and just bite the bullet and do it. So um, I I will do it. Expect new checklists. Expect um, for one thing, the topa will be required if it is a tenant occupied. So just. Um, uh, you know, it is, it, 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 it will be on that list. Great um, question, Christine. I, um, Rich, I see Mona's hand is still up. Is there another question there, Mona, or is that from previous? Sorry, Thank you. I to take it down. That's okay. That's all right. I want to make sure we got um, uh, I do want to, I did see the thing about the RLAS, um, which did change a little bit, but I, before I do that, I wanted the SBQ has been changed um, and uh, I, I do want to go over how that was changed. Um, it, it's, it's a slight change, but it's a great change. And, oh, I thought I was looking at the red line. So I'm, I'm going, well, where is this change? Um, and, uh, and let me see, the statutory didn't change. Um, what they did do, which I think is great, um, is in regards to pets or or anything like an animals, past or present. You know, um, you know, there may not be pets now. So if a seller was answering the question as of now, then you know they can answer it no. But if they had a pet a year or two ago, ago, then they would have to answer it yes. So I think that's a great addition. And um, I'm going to run and turn the light on, sorry. Um, I think it's a great addition that they added that, um, uh, they added that to, to the form. And, um, and also it should be noted, I think it's, it's noted up here, because uh, I read it somewhere, that um, you should be disclosing things. There's no time limit. You know, a lot of people ask me, well, what is the time limit on this? You know, if they did a remodel about 10, 15 years ago, do they still have to say, well, yeah, they do. Um, so there is no time limit on these questions. So they should be answering it, um, answering it, um, uh, about about that, but the big change here is right here, section number sixteen. It used to be neighborhood. Well, now it's neighbors and neighborhood. So if somebody has had a problem with a neighbor, you need to disclose that. I mean, I do. I got a call from Stephanie about, you know, somebody had a listing um, and uh, the neighbor is just a nightmare. And at night they shine, you know, high beams at their house. That needs to be disclosed, <laughs> you know? So, um, so things like that, or you have a neighbor who is just, you know, uh, you know, really a nightmare that, you know, um, you need to disclose that. Uh, I mean, you know, and remember when, when you're dealing with sellers, they all sh always should be looking at this form and also the TDS, um, putting three words in front of it. Are you aware? Those are the three words that need to be in front of it. Are you aware 
of neighborhood noise, nuisance, or other problems? If you're not aware, then the answer is no. There is never an I don't know. If you put those three words in front of these questions, you will always have an answer. So um, just make sure that they, they know that. So um, I see there's a question. Uh, 17J is great. It's seven, which is that 17J? Any differences between the name of the... Oh, yes, this is a great addition. Thank you, Alon, for, um, for uh, po pointing this out. This is a great addition to this form. Any differences between the name of the city in the postal ma mailing address and the city which has jurisdiction over the property? It is a great, it's a great question because there is a difference because Los Angeles, greater Los Angeles area covers Woodland Hills. It covers, it covers Valley Glen, Valley Village, um, Studio City. It's, that's all Los Angeles. In, you know, it could be in the assessor's uh, records as Los Angeles. I I moved to Van Nuys. I, no, I moved to Valley Glen three months after it changed from Van Nuys. Um, property property values went up, thank God. Um, but um, the post office still had it at, as Van Nuys across Burbank Boulevard. It's still post office still had it as Van Nuys, and that was Sherman Oaks. You know, so there are many different, there are so many examples of this. And, um, you know, you're, and sellers get so mad when you tell them, oh, no, you don't live in, uh, you, you don't live in Valley Village, you live in North Hollywood. Um, so, I, I, you know, I can't, I, I can't tell you how, you know, how many times sellers get, yeah, same goes for Tarzana and Reseda. Yeah, sure. Canoga Park in West Hills. It's, you know, it's all over because they keep, and the, the lines for the communities are established by the Board of Supervisors of Los Angeles. The MLS has nothing to do with it. I can't tell you when I'm, I'm on the MLS committee and I was on the um, assess, uh, uh, assessment committee on the MLS, a lot of realtors came in and said, you guys are changing the thing. We're not changing anything. You know, I used to love because there were so there would be so many um, listings that were Burbank that were listed as Toluca Lake. Well, if any of you know that area, you know, um, Clybourne on one side of the street, it's Toluca Lake on the other side of the street, it's Burbank. And I've actually had real estate agents say, well, we're on the. Burbank side of Toluca Lake. I said, there is no such thing as the Burbank side of Toluca Lake. Burbank has its own fire department. It has its own, you know, city hall. I mean, it's ridiculous that, but, but you know, Toluca Lake had a more prestigious um, zip code. And uh, so anyways, um, uh, I rich, but thank you. <laughs> rich, can I, can I point out one thing? Would this sure. apply to Beverly Hills and Beverly Hills Post Office? I think that would be a very good. Yes, right? absolutely. It yes. does. It does. Because yes, it does. 90210 goes all the way to Mount Holland, but it's yes. LA. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Same thing. Um, and somebody had a request for the um, the RLAS. I haven't looked at this since then. Residential lease after sale. Thank you, uh, the MLS committee, not the MLS, the RPA committee, that they actually put on the contract when to use what form. Um, so, and it's actually on the form, intended for possession of 30 days or more. Why? Because once it hits 30 days, um, it is uh, considered a, a lease and there are tenancy rights associated with somebody who is living in a property for 30 plus days. They, they just have tenancy rights. So uh, that's why lenders don't want you to do this, uh, rent back for more than 30 days. Um, and if you notice on the, uh, the SIP, 
it's not a, a lease, it's a license. It's a license to remain on the property. So anyways, um, what's uh, the RLAS is basically a lease. I mean, that's, that's what it is. So what is confusing about this form? Just out of curiosity. Uh, who who wanted me to look at it? Christine, did you want me to look? Who wanted me to look at this? No, I'm familiar with this. I even did it for myself. Um, yeah. I was just going to make a comment on, um because now everything is added on. If you go and look at that mold thing, wow, those photos. Oh, uh, oh, oh yeah. No. Well, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Oh, Alon, you wanted you wanted to go over this. What's what's confusing about it? Just out of curiosity. Do you have anything? Huh? There's a lot of red. <laughs> oh, on the on the other the other one. Let me look. Wait. Um, okay. The, well, I can tell you what they changed. Uh, the, it re, the, all they really did is re, revised it to conform to the changes in the residential lease or the month to month um uh rental agreement according to that handy dandy summary but let me look at the red line version um just so uh i'm looking at what you're looking at um i can't find this form in the red line you can't no it's no they're all alphabetical no, I don't see it in the red line. Where are you seeing it, Alon? It's there. He's saying it's there. Um, the residential lease? Huh. Because I am not seeing it well, either. The, the, the residential lease is there under LR. But not oh, I, I see it. Reva. I see it. I see it. Uh, it's in a different section. Um, where is this? Here. Okay, now I have to stop sharing that one and then let me share this one. Uh, here we go. Okay, so first, the first thing that they change is, is in regards to the payment as to how they want the payment. I think that what they've done is they've added like uh, electronic deposits and stuff like that. I don't think that was ever there before. Um, uh, the transfers, uh, tenant agrees as security deposits. Not really seeing anything. Supporting the reputation. The uh, security time will not be returned until the tenants have vacated the premises and all keys returned. That's interesting that they added that. Um, uh, excuse me, my owner. Parking. That is a lot, just to say that whether it is or isn't. But I, I think it goes into like, uh, you, well, they talk about campers and buses and trucks. So this, just so you know, all of this is changed in the regular lease. So they're just, they're taking what's in the regular lease and putting it in the, and they've even gone in vehicles leaking oil and gas shall not be uh, parked on the premises. You can't do any work on your car. Um, wow. They, they really did change it, yeah. But it's basically to fall in line with what they've changed in a regular lease. Um, so, um, uh, and you're seeing when I'm because something popped up on my screen. You're seeing this, right? The the red line version. Yes, we are. Okay, great. Because uh, it something popped up on my screen, so I just want to make sure. Um, condition of the property. Hmm. I don't remember. Well, the, there was talk about the memo. Yeah. 
So they want them to do a memo for residential uh, a residential lease after sale too. I don't remember them doing that. Um, and the, the submeter part's new. The submeter, yeah. Yeah, they basically just just uh, just copy the the month to month lease, you know, the the regular lease. Uh, smoking, I do know one thing that they added in regards to smoking, uh, and I'm looking for because I saw somebody make mention of it. Um, I thought they've added uh, vaping too but i'm not seeing it um but i thought that i had heard that they had added vaping to this that you can't vape either um you know rules and regulations you know if it's in a condominium landlord to agree 24 hour notice uh, 48 hour notice to, to conduct an inspection of the property prior to moving out uh, you know, written notice is required if they orally agree to an entry for agreed upon services or repairs. That's interesting. Um, no notice for, for an emergency or if tenant is pre present and consents at the time of entry. So they can knock on your door and say, can I come in? And, uh, you know, uh, it addresses photography, which is interesting because that's their this is a residential lease after sale. So this is really their property, you know, that um, they're leasing back. So um, yeah, and it even addresses Airbnb. It, it, it kind of seems, it really seems a little bit overkill, if you tell me the truth. Um, well, yeah. we'll encourage owners to get out. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, so, um, so yeah, anyway, so let me, are you talking about this one? 11 E landlord or tenant agree to state and local water use, uh, restriction shall supersede any obligation to water or maintain any garden or landscaping. So, well, you know, if we are on a, um, are in a drought and we're ordered not to, I mean, there was, I can't remember the year, but you know, everybody's grass was dead because we were told we couldn't uh, water the lawn. So, um, you know, obviously, the buyer wants the property maintained, but if he they phys, you know they act they're prohibited by um, by these ordinances or or restrictions to do it, then they're under no obligation to do it. I, I understand that, yeah. So, anyways, let me see if there's. Um, uh, Rich, I was going to say it's interesting that they put on here again death on prom premises after you yes. using the theft you buy. That's odd, and then also they're having agency confirmation as a tenant, right? Because you want this, you want this, because you still are involved. You know, which is a good thing because you establish that agency relationship for this portion of the sale, because us usually we would say, hey, that's after escrow, we have nothing to do with it. But if it's, you know, it is establishing an, a tenancy, so we maintain our relationship with that client until that portion of it is also done. So that is interesting that they did that. Um, the only other thing that I wanted to point out just off the top of my head is that you know, in the re request, not request, receipt of reports, um, there is a um, there is a option to include a link. Now, if somebody, if the buyer who's in receipt of these reports doesn't cannot or doesn't want to access these reports via a link they need to to um to tell the seller or the seller's agent 
uh, within. I should go to. I should go to this. Uh, I think it's. I think it's five business days. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, here it is. Um, that that they don't want to. Uh, they don't want it delivered but via link. Uh, reports to the buyer unable or unwilling job is that any of the down prefers to receive directly via uh, um, it's it's five days yes it's five days so within five days they have to say hey I don't want I don't want um, I don't want to look at this via link uh, you need to send me the documents which means is if it's a hundred page report, you need to send a hundred page report, um, so, you know, compress the pot file or somehow um, you can send it via email, but, um, but they don't have to, um, they don't have to um, uh, accept it via the link. Um, any new uh, HOA related forms, um, the forms just, mildly changed uh, let me see what the major changes were on the HOA forms let's see uh, what did I, I did see that they did I think it, it it went in line with the the change in the RPA in that certain forms were definitely required to be paid for by the um, seller, um, the statutory forms that were required, um, and then the other forms are negotiable whether they're paid for by the seller or the buyer. So I think that's it. Um, we're over our time. I hope this was helpful. Um, uh, you know. Most of the forms, they they got rid of, you know, the acknowledgements on, on most things. They, um, they uh, uh, like this residential lease after sale, they made it, they conformed it to, to mirror a, a re regular lease. Like I said, I think that's a little overkill. Uh, they did away with the, you know, the, um, they did away with the summer for those of you who offer summary they did away with all of those um, because the rpa is structured as a summary now so um so that's that uh let's see okay well thank you elizabeth um so i think that that's it for now um if there's anything that you guys you know, I'm always looking for um, um, uh, topics or forms or what, you know, that you want me to go over, let, you know, um, shoot me an email, let me know. I'll, you know, I've got <clears throat> two, um, two classes next month that I've got to fill. So we'll see. Um, anyways, uh, that's it for now. Um, uh, I appreciate you showing up and, uh, I'll have a, a, you know, a good night and stay healthy. Uh, I'm, uh this thing is going around. Everybody I think is going to get it. Um, so, um, make sure, you know, just watch yourself. Okay. Rich, uh, as always, thank you. You are thank you. a wealth of information and we greatly appreciate it. We had a really, really nice turnout, and I want to say they stayed from start to finish. So okay. um, we appreciate your time and um, all of your research to provide this information for us. Thank you. Great. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank Bye, you guys. so much. Bye. Bye.